Hi, I'm Alan Carter. I'm a Senior Specialist Solutions Architect for Electronic Design Automation at Amazon Web Services. And today I'm going to be talking about a GitHub project that I've published for EDA users so that they can uh, run their EDA workloads on AWS. So EDA workloads are highly variable and demanding. So this just kind of shows an example of how spiky they are. And it's really well suited for running on Amazon Web Services because of the scalability. And what we really want to be able to do is take advantage of the scale of AWS so that we're never constrained for compute resources when we're running our jobs. And there can be a wide variety of jobs that are running at any given time and we would like to be able to take advantage of that and use it cost effectively for running our jobs. So I'm going to go over a little bit about the Annapurna background of this project, some of the key requirements that we require for EDA workloads, an overview of the, of the CDK application and its features, and then a short demo. So Annapurna was acquired in 2015, and they helped develop chips for Amazon Web Services data centers. The team in Austin designs custom silicon that are used in the F1 FPGA instances and in the machine learning accelerated instances, Inferentia and Trainium, that accelerate inference and training. So from 2014 to 2020, Annapurna Austin was using a static SGE cluster that was running on AWS, but it didn't take advantage uh, due to the limitations of SGE of the ability of AWS to scale out and scale in. When AWS Batch was released, they used that for their VCS workloads, for their logic simulation workloads, which ran on AWS Batch quite well. Uh, some of the limitations that they ran into is SGE required manual scaling, so our resources never exactly matched demand, and we were wasting resources because a lot of times resources were sitting idle. AWS Batch does automatically scale up and scale down, but it lacks some key features that are required by EDA workloads. And then there are some EDA workloads that just wouldn't run on Batch because Batch requires the tools to run in a Docker container, and most of the EDA applications are not containerized. <clears throat> so Annapurna was looking for a new solution that met all of their kind of complex compute requirements as their projects were growing in volume and complexity. So some of the key requirements that they were looking for, and this is one of the ones that uh, was really missing in AWS Batch is license aware scheduling. So licenses as a consumable resource. And also fair share scheduling, which has since been added, but fair share scheduling so that your critical resource, resource, which is your licenses, so that they're fairly allocated to the different users of the compute cluster. Also, we needed a solution that didn't require containers like AWS Batch. We want it to wanted it to automatically scale, unlike our SGE cluster. Um, we want it to be high throughput. A lot of jobs get submitted very rapidly into the compute cluster by the tools. We wanted high capacity, so we basically wanted virtually limitless capacity to run as many jobs as we needed to at any given time. And we also preferred to use an open source solution so we weren't paying licensing fees for a commercial scheduler. And then a final requirement is we have a lot of sensitive IP, and so we wanted to minimize external dependencies so that we could run the scheduler with minimal or no internet access at all. So Parallel Cluster is a solution that uh, gives a, a Slurm cluster, but it was missing some features that we required for our applications. So there was no fair share, there was no license management that was configurable. Obviously Slurm does this, but it wasn't configured in the uh, parallel cluster configuration. And it also had limitations on the number of queues and the number of instance types. And the Slurm database uh, daemon wasn't configured for it either. So in late 2019, Annapurna Austin started developing 
a Slurm plugin for AWS for its engineering and software development compute needs. And it went into production in April of 2020. They've been using it successfully since then, and it meets their needs quite well. So the Annapurna solution has been enhanced and published on GitHub at AWS samples slash AWS EDA Slurm cluster. I want to note here, this is not an AWS solution or service. And so support for it is, you know, on open source basis. Um, none of the capabilities of it, however, are proprietary. It's licensed under the MIT Zero license, so it can be freely used by any AWS customer uh, that requires the same types of capabilities that it provides. So this is just a pointer to the URL of the of the GitHub repository. You can find that pretty easily in a search too. So the architecture is pretty sim simple. This is uh, just showing the AWS resources that are used by a typical cluster. So all of the infrastructure is deployed into a single AZ. You have one to three Slurm controllers. You have a Slurm DBD instance. We use the Amazon RDS serverless uh, SQL database for the Slurm DBD instance. We use Amazon FSx for a shared file system that's shared between the controllers and the daemons and the compute nodes. And then we, we the plugin uses the power saving API to give us a scalable compute cluster that can use any of the AWS instances and can use spot instances as well. One unique feature uh, of this project is the support for multiple AZs, including multiple regions. So this simply extends, gives the capability to configure compute nodes that run in different AZs in different regions. So we can configure additional AZs in additional regions. The, the Slurm infrastructure itself, itself is still running in a primary availability zone, a primary subnet. But the compute nodes that it's manage, managing can span all of the AWS regions and availability zones. Along with this, you can also add to the configuration of the compute nodes on-premises compute servers. And the way these that Slurm is configured is each one of these availability zones uh, is configured as a different queue. Uh, or a different partition, and the partitions are given different priorities. So you can, for example, configure your on-premises servers with the highest priority so that they're uh, given preference when scheduling. But if you run out of on-premises resources, then you can set your preferred AZs and new compute nodes will get launched there to run your jobs. So this is kind of a long laundry list um, um, of the features of this uh, GitHub project. So again, I think it's really important for scalability that the instances can run in multiple AZs and regions. Um, it can, and it can also manage on-premises servers. It supports any EC2 instance types, both x86 and ARM processors. It supports the Red Hat family of operating systems. So Red Hat or CentOS, Alma, Rocky Linux, and of course, Amazon Linux too is supported as well. It supports spot instances, and it has a fault injection simulator configured so that you can test spot terminations. So you can launch applications on spot and then inject spot terminations so that you can test how the applications handle that. The Everything is built into the AMIs for the compute nodes, and the AMIs are automatically generated by the Cloud Development Kit application that deploys the infrastructure, which allows cold nodes, nodes that are powered down, to boot up very, very quickly in under two minutes. When instances are idle, so when it's scaling out, it scales out very quickly. When they scale back in, when a node is idle, um, it can be stopped or terminated. Uh, it stopped. If it's stopped, it can restart faster. After instances have been stopped for a period of time that's configurable, then it will terminate the instances so that you stop being charged for the EPS volumes that are attached to the instances. 
And the IAM rules that are used for the various instances are pretty minimal, in particular in the compute nodes. It's really limited to those things that are required for metric collection, monitoring, and management. It also has boot up scripts that configure any NVMe as temp and swap space so that it can be utilized as well. Some features of the infrastructure, the AWS infrastructure that this builds is the infrastructure runs in one subnet. It can has controller and Slurm DBD infants Slurm DBD instances. By default, these are Graviton instances, uh, so ARM-based instances because they've got great performance and uh, their price performance like 40% less than x86 instances. So they're great for these kinds of applications. It uses an RDS serverless database that automatically scales up and down depending on the load on the database. Uh, you can configure up to three controllers for HA. Uh, it uses FSX for the shared file system for the Slurm cluster. And you can also configure additional mounts for your own file systems for data and work areas. The compute nodes scale up and down based on demand using the power saving API. All the jobs run in C groups so that jobs are strictly limited to the requested cores and memory that they requested. Uh, you can also configure always on instances. So if you have reserved instances or savings plans, then you can configure certain compute nodes to always run since you're paying for them, whether they're running or not. Um, and then it's, it's also smart enough, the AMI IDs are stored in SSM parameters, so those can be updated on the fly and the plugin will automatically detect any instances that are running on old AMIs and set them to drain state and then terminate them when they go idle. And it also supports federate, federated clusters. So the configuration of the scheduler, you can configure the, the licenses, so the license accounting and the fair share allocation, which were really important for EDA users. You can prioritize the queues for each AZ, which can also span regions. The scheduling done based on cores and memory is consumable resources. And then there's a feature set for each of the EC2 instances that's automatically generated for you so that you can submit your jobs based solely on feature constraints. So you can constrain the OS, the CPU architecture, SSDs, on-demand versus spot, CPU frequency, instance family, instance type, etc. So there's a fairly complete set of features that describe each one of the compute nodes. And so a user can just say, you know, if they want to run on a particular architecture or instance family, they can do that. Um, then the, the instance selection is based automatically on these features and the cost. So the weights for all the compute nodes are proportional to the actual cost of those instances on AWS. So, um, you know, Slurm tries to pick the compute node with the lowest weight that will meet the requirements. And so it, it automatically tries to pick the lowest cost instance that will meet the job requirements. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I want to say there. Um, as far as kind of operations, all the, the complete infrastructure and configuration is done automatically using Cloud Development Kit CDK and Ansible playbooks. So it's very easy to deploy the infrastructure. All of the AMIs are automatically created for all the different combinations of OS and CPU architecture that you've configured. It has detailed CloudWatch metrics and dashboards so that you can visualize what's going on inside of your cluster. It has automatic error notifications. So if there's any exceptions in the plugin or if there's uh, insufficient capacity exceptions or other things that happen, there are CloudWatch metrics for that. And you can configure um, alarms that take actions based on those. Um, it's configurable. You can configure multiple clusters in the same VPC. So it, it supports that. And it also allows you to set a lot of defaults using the environment variables and module files, such as you know the default queues, the default number of cores, default amount of memory, which makes it really easy for the users to use.
So that's kind of the feature set. I'm going to switch over now and do a quick demo. So I'm going to just quickly show it's not very exciting how to deploy the cluster. It's just a simple CDK application. So you have a configuration file, and then you run the install script. And then I'm going to show how you configure your virtual desktop environment to use the cluster. It's just a few command lines uh, uh, that you run there. And then just show. Uh, you know, a little example of submitting interactive and batch jobs and show how it can scale out over multiple regions. So I'm going to switch over to the demo now. Okay, so the first thing I want to demo is how to deploy the EDA Slurm cluster. The easiest way I found for people to get started is to create an AWS Cloud9 desktop. So if you haven't done it before, it's pretty simple. You just click Create Environment, give it a name, and uh, and, and then launch it. I've already done this uh, for the demo. So if you go and look at my environments, I've got my admin environment. When I click Open IDE, I get a tab that opens up like this. And I've got some notes and things that I've been doing in here. So um the first thing you're going to you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clone the AWS EDA Slurm cluster from GitHub and then you're going to want to CD into that directory. I've already done that down here. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to edit your configuration file. So the configuration file is simply a YAML file with a bunch of parameters. Many of the parameters inside of the YAML file are defaulted for you. Um, so you set that up and then creating it is you just call the install script and you pass in the path to your configuration file and then CDK command create, right? So if you just pat, first you need to configure your AWS CL your AWS, AWS CLI with your credentials. I've already done that in this work area. So all I have to do then is put uh, that and the install script will take care of installing any packages that are required by the CDK application and then it will go. Now I've already deployed it here, but if I hadn't, you'd see additional output here where it's going and creating it. So if I come over here, Running When you run this CDK application, what it's going to do is it's going to deploy a single CloudFormation stack for you. So in this case, I've deployed it in the Oregon region, so I've called it Slurm PDX. And once it's up and running uh, and it's been deployed, everything that you need to use it has already been done. So what you need to do next is you need to configure your environment to use this. So the first thing, there's several commands. If you go to the stack and you go to the outputs tab, there's three commands you need to run. So you need sudo access. So this first one just mounts the shared file system. Okay, so I'm going to come over to a DCV session that I have where I've got root access and I'm just going to put that in. So runs quick, we're just mounting. Um, Come back. The next thing is there's a script that runs that configures the users and groups for your compute nodes. So we're going to, again, we're going to paste that in. And that's just going to run a little um, Ansible playbook that installs a script that captures your user and group IDs and put the, puts those into a JSON file that the uh, Slurm cluster is going to use. Okay. So let's go back one more command. Um, and this is basically going to configure your instance so that it can use this Slurm cluster. Okay, so it's another Ansible playbook. Now, these Ansible playbooks are share, stored on the shared file system, which makes it real convenient. Um, and so it's going to install the things that are required uh, for the Slurm cluster. And what it's going to do is it's creating a module file, configure modules, it's creating a module file that you can load to in order to uh, use the cluster.
Okay, so it's done. So I'm going to open up a new tab here. I'm going to resize this window. Okay, and so if I do now, if I do a, a module avail, you're going to see that Slurm PDX module that's available. So all I need to do is do a module load Slurm PDX, and now my Slurm cluster commands are available to me from my virtual desktop. So if I do a SQ. You'll see that there's no jobs running. If I do an S info, you'll see I have a whole bunch of potential nodes configured across three different three AZs in each of three regions. So um, I don't have a whole lot. I have ten of each instance type configured there. Um, and I'll show you a short demo of how the, of what you can do with that. So let's um, let's first just do an S run. Um, of a pseudo term terminal um, of bin bash. Okay, so nothing's happening here right while it's provisioning because there's no instances running in my compute cluster. So if I switch over to another tab and I do an SQ, You'll see that it has allocated a node, so it's allocated a T3 large, okay? Uh, because by default, it's only requesting one CPU and 100 gig of memory. So I've set the defaults pretty modestly. Um, this instance is, if we go back over to the AWS console, and we open up the EC2, console. There we go. EC2. And you'll see that the instance has been launched here and it's running. So let's go back over to our DCV instance let's see so the state was configuring okay so now it's running so if we come back over now we've got a shell and you can see from the prompt that we're now running on this compute node okay and so we've got we've got an interactive shell now running on a compute node in our slurm cluster so that's that's pretty simple if i run it again it starts immediately because the you know the the node's already running it takes five minutes so right now it's configured so that if it's idled for more than five minutes then it will stop the instance but uh, so the instance is still running so let's show an example of an sbatch command so here here what i'm going to do is i'm going to submit 10 jobs I'm going to say C7 is for CentOS 7. I want x86. I'm going to specify T3 large on-demand instances with one core and all the memory. And I'm just going to run a stress ng job on each one of these just so that they run for a little bit and consume some CPU. And so you can see they all get submitted. Let's do an SQ on this now to see. So it's starting to allocate the nodes. So you can see by the naming convention of the compute nodes, you can see which region um, and availability zone. So it's US West 2A is where these are going. Let's show SQ again real quick. You can see they've all been allocated. So we're using all 10 of these T3 large uh, instances in, in the region. And one of them we already had running because of the S run command, so it started running quickly. The others, if we go back over to the list of instances and refresh that, then we'll see uh, the instances have been launched and they're booting up. So within a couple minutes, they'll start running those stress jobs. Okay, 
So you can see all, all 10 of them running. So if we come back over here, what happens if we dump in another 10 jobs? Okay, so all, all of these instances are, are running. So um, I'm going to jump dump in the next 10 jobs. Wait a second here, and then we're going to run SQ again and see what happens. So it's started with 196 to 205. Okay, so you can see them at the top. So you can see the first batch of 10 jobs ran on the 10 instances that are configured for US West 2A. You can see the next batch ran on 2B. Okay, so these are already running. We're configuring new ones. If I repeat this again, then it's going to use the third availability zone. So it's doing these in order because I've set up priorities on the partitions for each one of the AZs. And so it's first going to try AZ1, US West 2A, then 2B, then 2C. And then it's configured for the next region. I have US East 1 configured. So if I dump another set of jobs in, we're going to see these are going to start running in US East 1A. Okay. So this is just demonstrating the capabilities. Obviously, what I'm not showing here is you do have to configure your storage so that it's replicated across these. So you can use something like NetApp FSX for NetApp ONTAP, and you can configure Flex Cache so that you create replicas, uh, sparse caches of your file systems in the different regions. That would be a good approach for making sure that the storage that the jobs require is available. Another option, if your jobs aren't reliant on file systems like most EDA jobs are, is you could fetch the inputs for your jobs from something like S3 so that you don't have to replicate that. But you need to make sure that all the resources that your job needs are available in each one of the AZs and regions that you've configured. So um, that's, that's a quick demo. Um, there's a hopefully reasonably complete documentation in the GitHub repository, and you can always uh, spark up a discussion there if you have questions, and I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, but that's, um, that's the AWS EDA Slurm cluster uh, that supports all of the AWS instance types. Uh, spot instances, and it supports multiple AZs and multiple regions so that you can achieve massive scale for running complex EDA workloads. Thanks for your time.